there are families where the parents are always greater than the children you can give birth to eight children the highest of them will become something you are not proud of saying no matter how hard working have you seen people travel to america after 10 20 years they return back like armed robbers they look like the spirit of the city there are cities you enter and you can remember everything from when you were a child nothing changed regardless and in that city they will tell you the best professor came out from that city in the best the it people people come out from that city to bless the world and yet the city does not change there are spirits that keep it yes sir how about spirits of poverty you hear that someone was doing well and just came to a city and he starts going down until he looks like the city You want to become an intercessor? Yes. This also applies to families. There are families where things don't work. Please don't, I hope you understand what I'm teaching you now. Yes. Father was educated and serious. Mother was educated and serious. All the children graduates, grandchildren graduates, and yet nobody can have a decent job the most successful person the longest person who worked there worked only three years go and read your bible now i hope you understand what i'm teaching you now i'm not trying to get you emotional if i mention a case that relates to yours i hope you understand that i'm just teaching generally do we understand now there are families, for instance, where the greatest people who represent the strength of that family always die. The moment someone gets a job with NMPC and he says, glory be to God, he dies. So you find a territory with weak people. All the people that have the strength to bring deliverance, there is a spirit that comes to cut them short. You are not an intercessor if you do not understand the burden of the territory. What are you praying over? you don't just listen an intercessor does not say god give people jobs oh god give people children that's a child's prayer you come to the root of the problem the controlling powers many years ago you've heard it in my teachings many years ago i went to preach somewhere in northern nigeria it was a crusade a can crusade i think or, or something of that sort and through god is my witness I saw several, something was happening to the women. Now, I'm not a medical doctor, but every time they gave birth, they became deaf and dumb immediately. Not one, not two, not eight, not ten. I said, I, well, I'm not a doctor, but at least I have, I did biology enough to know that this is, what is the relationship between giving birth and becoming deaf and dumb? Once you see a prevalent pattern, it is not sickness, it is a spirit. Are we together? There are family members where children of 12 years have high blood pressure. What is the child thinking about? You really think that's a disease? No. 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 Even medical science tells us sometimes they trace certain sicknesses and they'll say, does your father have it? Does your mother have it? In the name of Jesus, let me speak over someone. Any pattern that will not allow your family represent the purposes of God. I call upon the God of my covenant. This night, it lives your life forever. Please sit down. I have seen patterns of poverty over families. There are territories where the preachers never break through anointed they love God sincerely some of the the holiest godliest men and yet the territory does not open after 10 years 40 members it declines to 30 during Thanksgiving it goes to 80 and you see the people saying God did you send me if only they understood that there are veils and there are gates over territories listen to what I'm telling you there are controlling powers over territories. There are controlling powers 
over regions. There are controlling powers over families. Don't you think the devil will just fold his arms and watch you and your children just go like that? There is a pharaoh that will fight your exodus. It takes spiritual intelligence to define your possibilities. Patterns of bad luck, patterns of ill health, patterns of widespread barrenness, mother barren, gave birth only after 10 years, Father, um, brothers barren, sister barren, is a demonic thing. There are patterns where things that are started never finish. Have you seen those kinds of things? You will see a house, they will tell you they started building this house in 1987. Until now, what is in a house that cannot be built? You will hear that the person who had money and came to build it died there. Have you seen those things? Don't be afraid of what I'm teaching you. It's the truth. You stand upon a territory. Jesus looked over Jerusalem and began to cry. Why was he crying? He saw that there was a spirit that casted blindness on the people. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, he said, if thou had known even in this thy time the things that pertain unto your peace, but they are hidden from you. The widow at Nain, there, is a, there was a pattern that kills all the men in her life. Her husband died. Her only child was about to die. And the intercessor came and said, no, we have to change something here. God is raising many of you right now because there, there are age long, some of them centuries old problems in your area. And your grandfathers tried to do the best. Help them please. They tried to do the best that they could do. My God, I sense such an anointing. Such an anointing. Such an anointing. Just help those under the anointing. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Will you blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Blow every sadness, blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Hear me, there are territories that have patterns where those who work for things never enjoy it have you seen that pattern you labor there are people who have raised others there are people in nigeria almost every great name they participated in their rising and yet there is nothing for you it's a spirit it's a pattern they sit over territories Skate bakatos sande patalakatos embreke te katos koti barakata skada bata katos kete kata embreke te katos koto bakata kebas kebas ketalis kenea embreke te katos kati balakata. Shadakata bakata katos, emprete ke parakatos kati kata, ke prende skete lakatos kati yada, kaparis kati yaha. Just pray in the spirit in one minute. Sanakata bakata skoto prende kata, kileks ke ni matas koto prende kati yaha. I sought for a man who would stand in the gap that I will not destroy them.
Hallelujah. Let me finish because we are going to pray tonight. Worship team, get ready. You will sing that my song for me again. Ah, my spirit is fired up. Listen, you have to say enough is enough. If not for your sake, for your children on board. I've gone through the pain already. Let innocent people not go through this again. I've gone through the poverty. I went through the pain of idolatry. I went through the pain of polygamy. I went through the pain of delay. Go through it for their sake. That is the character of an intercessor. Shakatabakatos. Someone pray, you are engaging the spirit for the sake of those connected to you. Listen to me. Hear me. Please listen to me. I'm teaching you the principles of prophetic intercession. There are families where the children will always bring shame to the parents, no matter the investment. It's not that they are bad. They find themselves going to fish trouble and return back with shame. You send them to go for studies. They return with shame. Wasting your money and your time. Remember what I taught you. He continued further. If and when unhindered, evil will always continue further. Hear me. Let me tell you this. I made up my mind and I made a covenant with God that everything I've suffered in my life it ends with me my children will never whether spiritual or physical they will never this is the character of an intercessor in one minute I'd like you to pray send prayer investments let it end with me let it end with me the poverty the failure the limitations let it end here thus far have you come no further shall you go pray 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 in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus please sit down please sit down just help those under the anointing now hear me please don't be distracted we are praying I want you right now as you are seated in one minute study the patterns you have seen in your family just think about it honestly study the patterns you have seen from the region you come from there are regions that have the spirit of anger there are regions that have the spirit of disunity there are regions that have the spirit of irresponsibility is the women that serve the men there are regions that have help them please kabash kanikatosia widespread laziness oh 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 I can see with the eyes of the Spirit and I see 
a mighty army rising yes i know they're rising in the thousands coming from afar coming from afar hey. oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Listen, hear me, please listen carefully, listen, it was from Zaria that the Lord sent me here, there is a spirit over that region, you start a walk, it does not last more than three years, something must happen that brings you down, you may still be there, but you never maintain the texture of your glory. There are regions like that. I sought for a man who would stand in the gap. Woe betides a family with no intercessor. Woe betides a business with no intercessor. Don't you think because it's business you don't intercede? Woe betides a ministry that has sounds and mics and has beautiful skilled people but without intercessors. Woe betides a preacher without personal intercessors. No matter how anointed you are in these end times, if there are no men who can hold on the altar for you, you may not last. I tell you, the evil of the times will eat you up to your shame and surprise. Please sit down. Controlling powers. I've shared with you my vision that I was praying some years ago when the ceiling in my room just disappeared and I'm seeing this spirit and this being looking at me looking like Leviathan looking like, like, like a dinosaur with a tail that had its own life the eyes were as big as a human eye and he says so you think you can bring god's people into abundance and i saw that spirit there are horns that stop the voices of men from rising to the nations there are many anointed people in this nation there are many gifted people in many families but there are spirits sitting on their glory number one please sit please sit discernment and the understanding of the controlling powers the primary explanation to territorial backwardness is not the blindness of the people human beings are God's creation they are not that dull only God would open your eyes to see the territories assigned over Nigeria don't you think Nigeria is just sitting free of attacks Go and see the powers that reside in the sea. The powers that manipulates the elements of nature. A ministry like this. You think the devil would just fold his arms and watch? No, sir. But we look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. Lord, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to 
Good afternoon. Um, happy New Year. Yes, what is I, I just want to let you know that there's rent, there's school fees. How much is the school fees? You said 5,000 before. Just because you say how much? Well, sir, it's not exactly 5,000. The issue is that the way we do it here, when we pay school fees, we transport ourselves here and we need this. The pattern of wisdom is not there. And the uncle looks at you and already knows you are a thief because you are trying to take advantage of his generosity. You kill favor from your life and your family. How about fighting landlords? You are a tenant. You are fighting the landlord. Look at the, on the servant who was in trouble. Read your Bible. When the master was going to, he just knelt down and begged and said, please, there's, there's nothing. Just know what you say. Okay, I forgive you. And then he went back to oppress others. But at least he was wise. David knew God. God said, now I give you an option. Let me deal with you myself or let me give your enemies. Say, enemies, God, let's do it. These people, men don't have mercy. You are the only one who is merciful. So let's, I can beg you somewhere along the line. So those of you who run away from God, you don't know that you are running, you are running away from safety and mercy. No matter what, don't run from God. Don't run from God. You run to men, men are killers. They have a track record of killing anything. But it is only God whose mercy, he says, his mercies are new every morning. God can say, I will punish you tomorrow. And in the next two hours, you have touched his heart. You don't even, sometimes you just put a worship song and he keeps hearing. The song is dedicated to you while you are sleeping and say, what is this? By morning, you wake up with favor and say, God, I thought you were angry. Say, my anger only endures for a moment. First Corinthians 3 verse 10. What is our challenge as believers? That we be careful how we build. Many of us are building things that are out of pattern. And my brothers and sisters, let me tell you. The world has its way of doing things. And if we subscribe to the way of the world to do things, you will be in trouble. There are many believers that don't give. Do you know why? Because they have been, they, they will not tell you they hate giving or they, 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 they believe they love giving, but it's not yet a revelation. They have not seen it as a spiritual pattern to increase. And then the only thing they give is tithe and offering. And say, God, that's it. You too, you saw it. I gave you tithe, I gave you offering. That's already proof that greed is near your door. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. It's true. It says, but let every man take heed how he build it. So that you don't waste your time building according to an invention of yourself. And then in the end of it, when the fire of God that comes to prove men... To see whether their buildings last so that they are rewarded. It comes. And all your 10 years has been a total waste of time. There is nothing there. Going to church for 10 years. But building according to a pattern you want. And when God is allocating new graces for people. New anointings. Alright. Let me see what you have done. The fire passes. This is solid. Fresh grace. The fire passes. Fresh prophetic. More wealth, more membership, and they come to you and they see a mountain and fire blows it, and what is there is not even up to a stone. And God says, Start again. You invented this pattern by yourself. Are we together now? Yes, sir. Is it not in your Bible that when the owner of the talents came to prove the people. The person who he gave something before. It's not only Satan that collects things from people. My brothers and my sisters. The gift of God is without repentance. But the talent he gives you, he collects it. But that talent is money. It's not just talent like ability to sing alone. Mm -mm. God gives you something, you misuse it. You will be shocked to see what will happen. 
We have this mindset that everything God gives you is once given, always given. It's a lie. Go and read your Bible. See, be careful how you are taught. Just because a thing is a mainstream understanding, you just receive it. The person who is teaching on the anointing and teaching on those things, to what degree are they working in it? He said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled, even of the word of life, that's what we teach. There are things that God gives men, my brothers and my sisters, he watches out for stewardship. And if he finds out that there is no steward, let his bishopric another take. Is it not in your Bible? The bishopric was allocated for him, but he says, let his bishopric another take. So it is possible. There are three things that building according to pattern guarantees. Number one, the manifest glory of God. The glory of God. The stamp, the seal of His presence that guarantees all the possibilities you desire. Exodus chapter 25. Let's read verse 9. Or let's read from verse 16. Exodus 40. Let's just jump to 40. For time's sake. Exodus chapter 40. We'll read verse 16. Then 33 to 35. Exodus 40 and verse 16. Read with me Koinonia. One to read. First did Moses. Uh -huh, according to all that the Lord commanded him. So did he. Go to 33. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle of the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. But he didn't just finish the work he wanted to do. He finished the work according to the pattern that was given to him. 34. What happened? Then a cloud. After he finished according to pattern, then a cloud covered the tent of the meeting. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Next verse 35. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation. Why? Because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the Lord rested upon it. The glory of God comes to confirm that you followed patterns correctly. The, the glory of God upon a life, upon a ministry, upon a family, among other things, is a confirmation that spiritual patterns, if I see the glory of God upon your career, if I see the glory of God upon your life, upon your family, upon your ministry, it is proof that a pattern has been kept. Genesis chapter 4. And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Read on. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain a tiller of the ground. Verse 3. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Everybody say an offering. So we know he brought an offering. Verse and Abel also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Bible says, And the Lord had respect first unto Abel and then to his. Two of them brought offerings before God. Just that you are offering something before God does not mean he will receive it. The Bible says he had respect, regard for the offering of Cain, of Abel, and left that of Cain. Verse 5. But unto Cain and his offering. He had not respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. He was angry. Verse 6. And the Lord said to Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why art thou angry? And why is thy countenance fallen? Verse 7. This is where the message is. If thou doest well, that means you do well when you do according to pattern. There was something Abel did. In other words, your father mentored both of you and showed you the pathway already. Abel followed according to the pattern and I received it. You violated it and it was not received. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? 
That means if thou does not do well, shall thou not be rejected. Notice what I told you earlier on. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at your door. What sin? Jealousy. You see, you see what I was telling you? Every time you don't pay attention to follow results thoroughly, the patterns that produce them, the frustration that comes as a result of your not getting it will make you to search around for Abel. If you are Cain, you will keep looking for Abel everywhere. Even if he's your brother, you will look for him till you kill him. Career people, this is the secret behind the anger that comes when one person out of five people are promoted. So what do you think you are? Every time the sacrifice of Abel is taken and that of Cain is rejected, sin is at the door of Cain. And it's the sin of bitter jealousy and hatred. That means for many jealous people, the issue is not the issue on ground. The issue is you need to go back and say, Lord, what can I do so that my sacrifice will also be accepted? The prophets of Baal and Elijah, same thing happened. The prophets of Baal were doing their thing. And fire did not come down. And when it was time, Elijah didn't just say, oh, fire, come down. No. Elijah said, set up the altars. Put 12 stones. Patterns. When he put everything, he now called on God. You don't call God before you fix it. You make sure that the altar is in place. The sacrifice on it. Then you call down the fire. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted. But if you do not do well, not only will you be rejected, sin. Please get this. This is a powerful message. Anybody today that you have jealousy or you see the person and something in you, you just wish the person will at least fail a little to console you. It's not like you are bad. It is proof that your patterns have been violated. And so you hope that the person's sacrifice will also be rejected so that two of you will become partners in that rejection. When your sacrifice continues to be accepted, you find out that the love of God grows in you because there is nothing to fight. You see that? Yes. But when you sit down and give people a flimsy excuse that God cannot touch you, God cannot lift you because you didn't do A and B and somebody comes in the name of Jesus and raises one song and everything you say God cannot do, God is doing it. The person who gave that proposition will just smile but hatred has begun. Sin lieth at your door every time your patterns are violated. So the glory proves that the patterns have been kept. Let me tell you this. Please families hear me. When you find out especially that all of a sudden the heavens close over you. Financially, no help no favor, please go back carefully and check if you are honest and sincere, a pattern has been violated. And the, the painful thing about family is because they are connected. One person seen like a can, other people can also benefit from it. I was counseling a family one time and I remember, and you know, the wife was talking and said, we are tight as we are this. I kept looking at the man. He kept looking at me like Jonah. Because he, he knew that that statement was relative. My spirit just kept looking at him. I said, no. I looked at him and I said, Mr. Man, I want to be honest with you. God gave you an instruction one time to sow a seed to a man of God. He said, yes, sir. I said, did you do it? They added money in, that, in what I told them with the wife to make the money. And the man was supposed to take it. He cornered the money. Part of the money from what God showed me, he bought petrol for car and then some needs came and that's how it went. And he came back and lied to his wife that the man of God blessed them. God is not a fool, my brothers and my sisters. You must not do it, Aquila and Priscilla. You must not do it, but if you would do it, do it according to the pattern. Was the land money not your own? Was everything not your own? You have lied against the Holy Ghost. There are people who collect money from their parents. They say they are coming to sow to men of God. On the way, they spend the money and enjoy everything and come and stand and just smile and snap the man of God blessing them and say, you see, no, 
you can do this for men, but not in the realm of the spirit. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run. Number two, quickly. Building according to patterns guarantees sustainability of results. It's one thing to have results, but the results must be sustainable. Matthew chapter 7, from verse 24 to 27. Matthew chapter 7, Jesus is teaching here. Matthew chapter 7. Therefore, look up please, Koinonia. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built, everybody say built, upon a rock, solid foundation. Next verse. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not. Why? For it was founded upon a rock. Next verse. And everyone that heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened to a foolish man. Where, what is his foolishness? That he built his house upon sand. The foolishness is not in the dexterity of the building, but the fact that all that is a wasted project because the patterns you don't build on sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. Listen. And great was the fall of it. Was it because the building was wrong? The pattern. That means it is possible to be given every week. You carry envelope. Tight has come up and you are coming but you are not tightening according to pattern. You are like the man building here. For you, tight is just a bribe. And you drag and come frowning and you are eyeing the person who is, is collecting the thing and just looking around and wondering what are they going to do with our money. Oh yeah, let me just drop. You have violated the pattern. The Bible didn't say give to the Lord. It said honor the Lord. Honor, honor. Recognize that he does not need it. It is a spiritual transaction that brings you increase and opens your heavens. So you approach him, Lord, I am grateful with all my heart. I thank you. If God places a demand upon you, for instance, you know that it is a time for lifting. But many people will sit down and complain and run their mouth and do everything. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver, not a giver, a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver is not a smiling giver. A cheerful giver is one who has a revelation of the harvest and the integrity that backs that harvest. That the only way Satan destroys the harvest of men is to stop them from sowing. But if that seed has touched the soil of the ground and it is left to grow, then God gives increase. No man gives increase. Increase is of God. Stability of results. We all want sustainable results. So you must build according to pattern. There are patterns that God showed me that govern the anointing and govern increase in ministry. And God told me if you keep these patterns, it will be impossible to fail. It's true. I believed him. I still do. And I have kept those patterns. And it's amazing what God does. You need to return back to say, Lord, where am I missing it in these patterns? My results vacillate. My results vacillate. That means something is wrong. Have you tried to on light? And let's assume that one of the wires is touching. You see how the light comes up, then goes up. You are trying to hook the whole thing, let it stay well. But notice that when you tie it and screw it well, you put it on the wall, every time you hit that bulb, the light comes and stays for as long as you command it to stay through obedience. So next time when you come and switch off your light and it doesn't on, or it on and off, on and off, check the bulb spiritually or go and unscrew everything. And you find out that because you didn't tie it well, children were playing around and they removed that thing. You adjust it like Elijah. Bring back those patterns and fire will fall once again. When you see a man of God that used to be anointed, used to be powerful, used to be great, used to be miraculous, and then all of a sudden church goes down, grace goes down, everything goes down. Yes, I agree it can be an attack. 
But the whole excuse cannot just be around the attack. You need to go back and say, Lord, what is it? Was it pride? What, what did I miss? And I'm telling you, men can be laughing at you here, but if you set up that altar again, fire will still fall. Are we together now? Number three. Building according to pattern guarantees peace and confidence. Isaiah 33 verse 6, the A part says that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability, stability of thy times. Peace. Anything that is not built according to pattern, you will keep having fear. Do you know success can bring fear? When what you have gotten was not obtained by the knowledge of the patterns that brought it. You will fear the instruction from God to give it, one. Number two, you will fear the sustainability of it. I have seen many people that money is like a cost to their life because they don't know how it came and they are always afraid. Afraid of who will steal it. Afraid of this and that. Afraid that even God will join the people to steal it. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. There are men of God in ministries like this. That would never allow people that they are raising in the ministry to rise. Because they have not been able to master the pattern that brought the anointing. So they would throw down everybody. Don't rise. Let there be only one person shining and doing well. No. When you understand that there are spiritual patterns. My brothers and my sisters, when you hold the patterns of the spirit, sorry for who is looking for your downfall. He will waste his time till Jesus comes. You are not as powerful as the patterns. It is the patterns that make you look powerful. Hmm. Follow these patterns and you will watch the prophecy of those who want to see your downfall continue to be disappointed as you rise higher and higher. They look at you and conclude that hey, this young man will he ever rise? But you know the patterns. Someone can bow and beat his chest and say, for as long as I'm sitting in this office, you will never rise. And you just look at the person. And you know that God is the lifter of men. And you go back and say, Lord, I am not looking onto this job. I, my, I lift up my eyes onto the hills. My help cometh from the Lord. And the Lord said, are you sure? Am I your help? You say, yes. Okay, step back. Let me show you how I help men. And you just hear in two days that they've lifted that man from that branch. And sent him to another branch. And you send him a valedictory letter. It's, it's my pleasure to watch you go. Can I help you carry your load? Is there any way I can escort you? And God will use his life as a lesson. That no man can be God over another person. Listen. There is nothing that has security in this world except the patterns of God. Did you hear what I said? No bank has security. No police headquarters has security. Nothing is secured enough for you to stake your life upon. The only thing that can be secured enough is the patterns of God. A man can promise that I will help you today and change his mind tomorrow and say something came up and I hate you. Period. Why? I am a man. I will give you a job next week and say I've changed my mind. I won't help you again. You can hold your certificate like this and it will look like a newspaper before life. It's not supposed to be but sadly. You will hold it and travel around. You will travel abroad and say I'm a graduate. They say all that is nonsense. And live as if you never saw the four walls of any institution. But when you hold on to the patterns of God I never, I never stop, I never stop wondering at these guys that drive these big trucks. All these trucks that is, is container that is at the back. Sometimes you see the truck tilted. You, you, you know what I'm talking about? You know that something is wrong with their truck. And you see the people just in and happy because there is a pattern. They know that there is a system of stability there. And that system of stability is not compromised easily. And you, your ignorance creates an imaginary fear because you do not know the system upon which that truck was built. 
Sometimes they are about to turn within a small place and you are even pitying them. And you see the fantastic, you see, you see the, the mechanics that happen there. And that car just turns within a small space. Patterns. What you do not know will always create fear in you. If I dash you five naira, when it becomes two naira, you will be afraid. But when the keys of the kingdom, the patterns of God, deliver ten naira, even if it's one naira, you smile. Because it's only the money that finishes the patterns don't die. Are we together now? If all you have, my brothers and my sisters, is what men gave you, and you have not held on to the patterns of the kingdom, then there is no guarantee. There is no guarantee. Because every other thing in this life can fail. But my brothers and my sisters, plug your life to God and plug your life to his patterns and what stability in the midst of chaos. And quite honestly, sometimes even you will not know how the breakthrough will come, but you trust the God of patterns. His integrity is behind his patterns. Young man, how will you be established in this Nigeria? Apostle, help me ask the federal government. You are joking. You are asking the wrong people. Every young man becomes established, not just through a job. He becomes established based on his activating the patterns and the keys of the kingdom. And so you cry and say, Lord, show me your ways. Let my eyes see. Oh God, wash my eyes with eyes salve. Let me see something that men do not know. Man of God, how will your church grow? My relatives promise me that they are going to bring, they will start attending my church. How many relatives do you have in that city? Go back to the God of patterns. Let God show you something. And you will see that whether you are at the riverside or the mountain, the crowd will still come. Because there are patterns that bring them. Handle the pattern. Bring the anointing. My brothers and my sisters, you will watch your life become a sign and a wonder. First to you and to all that know you. What any man thinks or doesn't think is notwithstanding. They are keys. You hold them and you know I have held them. Hold on to the patterns that bring favor. I can look at you and wave you and say, see you at the top and I mean it. Even if at that point you don't have Gary, I will not give you five naira, but I will beat my chest and tell you where to meet me in the future and I can guarantee you will go there. The patterns. This is what we do business with in this kingdom, my brothers and my sisters. The commodity that makes men great, they are the patterns of the kingdom. The, the authorized channels You see this Bible? I want you to believe what is written there. But it is not reading the Bible haphazardly that will bless you. You will need eyes to see what key connects to which one. The patterns of God. Give us Jeremiah chapter 6. We are rounding up. I pray that as simple as this message is tonight, that it will truly minister to someone. That your fear and your instability... Sometimes you even fear results when they start working because you are not sure it will be sustained. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. They are stabilizers. A small child tries to walk and he's not sure he can walk for long. So you see how careful he's walking. One, two, and he wants to reach out to the mother. But an adult can run. He does not expect his strength to fail because his mind has been educated to know that the, the, the legs can take the weight of the body. That knowledge has brought stability to his life. You don't climb your bed in the night wondering. In spite of the noise it makes. You are sure. You saw what the carpenter did. You were a witness. And so you trust what the nails are doing. The area of fear in my life. In your life. In our lives are proofs that we have not understood the patterns that govern them. Thus saith the Lord. We're rounding up tonight, Koinonia. Stand ye in the ways. Like you stand by the road looking for a car that will take you to a far journey. You come out of your house with a bag ready for a journey. You are going far, but you are standing. 
Kekenape passes and you say, no, this is not it. Another bus passes. You can even say, should I stop? You say, no. But when you see the car that looks like the one that can take you, you highlight it. You step into that car and trust the driver to take you. Sometimes even after 22 hours, you will still arrive. I trust the patterns that God has put. My first confidence is Him. And then the invincibility. By the privilege of God's grace, I have tasted of the invincibility. Look, let me tell you. God's patterns are powerful. You will see things shake left, right and center. But you will stand in the midst of it. This ministry, my brothers and my sisters, I submit to you that this ministry that you are part of was not built by luck. There is a solid spiritual foundation upon which it sits on. And there is no wave, there is no rain, there is no devil that is capable of capsizing that boat. I want you to build your life on something real. I don't want you to build your life on money. That's a wrong pattern. I don't want you to build your life on people. That's a wrong pattern. I don't want you to build your life on what uncle said. Don't build your life on the expectation of one father's inheritance there. No. You can build your life and sit down and rejoice. And say, Lord, I know that my life is great. And people will ask you, where is the evidence? And he said, the evidence is God and the integrity that is behind his patterns. But I know whom I have believed. Hmm. But I know whom I have believed. Listen, hold on. Hold on with this. My brothers and my sisters, come. 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 You begin a journey. Come, gentlemen. We all begin a journey in this big stage called life. And everybody starts working based on whatever he thinks is his security. For this gentleman, it may be his eloquence. For this person, it may be a charm that they gave him in the village before he left. To another person, it may be his education. But to someone somewhere, he says, I know whom I have believed. My father was nothing. My mother was nothing. Lord, I may not have much, but I believe in you. I believe in your patterns. And the green light says, go, move slowly guys. We all begin to walk. And the difference begins to show. The pride of the uncle keeps this one in one position. And is regretted and explaining while the rest keep moving. The charm fills this one. And he stops somewhere at age 31 never to rise again. And another person begins to go. His education takes him so far. And he makes quite appreciable progress. Except for the wickedness of his superiors. They peg him at a position. But the people that do know their God. Just because you started like the rest does not mean you are like them. Hear what I'm telling you. I am giving you something you will be grateful for. Something you will not need to change after decades of your life. It is painful to trust in something and have to adjust it later. Because you found out it didn't work. Why settle for mundane things while you can settle for something that works? Just because you have one small car or one small house or one small... Those things are nonsense. That's not where your strength lies. Men will promise you and say, I will be there for you. They will be the first to stab you and throw you away. Tonight is a call. God is not only the God of heaven. He is the God of patterns. And the rain came. The rain stopped this one. The storm stopped this one. The wickedness of men stopped number three. But the house that was built on the rock. From Zaria to the ends of the earth. From your village to the corridors of power. From your small room to a palace of royalty. From a small corner behind that place to a stadium healing the sick and lifting wheelchairs. And they say, how did you get here? The God of patterns. I followed a pattern. I stood at the threshold of destiny and I said, people have failed. And God told me to ask. And as I kept looking, I saw an old path with grasses all over there. And the Holy Spirit told me, this is the road the ancient followed. 
And they said, although it looks dusty, follow it. We're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. And you follow the path. For a while, your life may look strange. Because the pride and the foolishness of men will not allow them to see the wisdom of God. It is only when God opens your eyes to see the road. Some may trust in horses and they may trust in chariots. They trust in connections, etc., etc. And let me tell you, one by one, by one, by one, the elements and the forces of life will beat down the arrogance of men. The job your uncle would give you, sadly as you were graduating, he died. He's not a bad man, he only died. But when you lift up your certificate, you lift up your gift, and you say, Lord, I'm the only one in my family. I'm the only one in my family. Lord, I know that you can help me. Let me share with you a very touching story, and then we're done. I want to do something I've not done. Come, darling. This my dear. Come. Yes. Let me tell you something about this adorable lady. And I'm saying it because it's something that... Come. You see this wonderful lady? I, I, I don't know her so much, but... It was... I'm saying this because it's... it's it was one of, I think it was last year or year before last, during Christmas. Is that so? Also. And I had a very, it was one of the most touching periods in my life. Her dad was paralyzed and her mom, one night like this, I just had a call and they said the mom just dropped dead. And it looked like the life of this lady. I love her very much. Are we together? This dear lady was in a position. Dad could not do anything. Mom was there. I'm not trying to embarrass her. This, this, these are things that, you, I mean, the burial was done and all of that. I remember how touching this was. And I put myself in the position of this lady. No support. No nothing. In that situation, she still had to cater for her younger ones. And in spite of everything, you know people, village people with all their trouble, long and short, everything was over. And when everything was done, this dear lady came. I think it was outside here or somewhere there. I looked at her and I said, my dear, look at me. If you believe the things that I teach you and you believe this truth, you will come out. I tell you, that the God of patterns will bring you out. You may see her look small. No advantage, no connection. But my God. Ah. Have you not seen God lift men? My brothers and my sisters. What does he have to do for you to believe? I have seen God lift men. I have seen God take no bodies. They were stupid enough to say, I have nothing to lose. Let me give my heart to Christ. Because I gave my heart to every foolish person around me. And it destroyed my life. And you come and say, Lord, I hand my life. I don't have a father. I don't have a mother. Or I have a father who is not like a father. I have a mother who is not like a mother. Lord, like Gideon, I'm the least in my family. My brothers and my sisters, you are not called to know everything. You are called to know the patterns. When you know the patterns of the kingdom, you will start walking like a toddler from one step to another. They'll say, watch out, watch out, he's falling. Until you start running like a plane about to lift. And the next thing they see you in the sky. Given wings by the spirit of God. And they say, are you not the villager that could not speak English when I knew you as 12? You said, that was me. Jesus died, it's true, but now he's alive and glorified. Who is God speaking to tonight? That everything around your life is governed not by time. Listen. And not by luck. You will never build a ministry with time. You will never be rich with time. It takes your knowledge of the patterns of God. You are a worshiper. Lord, what is the pattern for the Davidic order of worship ministry? There is too much tribalism in Africa. Who must you know and must you know to rise? Lord, bypass this thing. Give me something that only heaven can give. I went to pray. I found it. I found it. My dear brothers are here and they will tell you. Once upon a time, I would spend the night researching on the largest churches in every continent. 
continent. I was not looking for the size. What was the secret? And when I found them one by one, I began to write. And when I looked up, I said, Lord, we are ready. Let's take this journey. And when we started, many people laughed and they just looked and said, Oh dear, you can laugh at a man, but don't be foolish enough to laugh at patterns. Patterns are solid, as solid as the God that backs them. You catch the patterns that bring favor. My brothers and my sisters, I give you a guarantee. You will be in your small room there. And the next thing, somebody will come. Others are saving for cars. And somebody will come and say, Kenny, take, take. Benga, take a house. A Jimmy, take. Let me lead you. And someone sits down and says, God told me to lift your family. Who in your family is looking for a job? You say, we are all orphans. Say, no wonder God sent me. To a point that you will be thinking there is a catch to it. Because human beings are not given to be this benevolent for nothing. But when you walk with the patterns of God, there may be a young minister here just looking and everybody is laughing at you. And even you, you are laughing at yourself, saying, Lord, can I rise? The pressure is so much. I can't prophesy. I can't heal the sick. Even the revelation is just like trickles. My brother, listen, don't run around trying to look for invitations. Don't run around trying to look for all these notice. Me thing is a Luciferian spirit. Stay back in the secret place. Walk these patterns. Understand them. And you will rise up like David. You will stand before Goliath. And say, Goliath, I'm not rehearsing. I'm taking off your head. I was shown the formula already. When they stood before Jericho, God said, return. The pattern for victory has not been given. Go back before you disgrace yourself. But when you catch the patterns, you will stand before life. And you will rise. Are you ready to pray? Listen. Your life is not at the mercy of situations and circumstances. My brothers and my sisters, I don't care what is happening to you. You are going to pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, a seeing eye. Open my eyes to see the patterns. The patterns that are responsible for the results that I desire. Is someone please praying tonight? Life is not luck. Shalabarado siya katapala. A seeing eye, O oh God, a seeing eye, the spirit of revelation, that my eyes will be flooded with light. Show me the keys, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to cry before God. Mention the areas in your life you know that you have not caught the patterns. I'd like you to be serious. Say, Lord, I have gotten it in this area and I give you thanks. But this one, my finances, my spiritual life, increase. I experience breakthroughs here and there, but there is no favor in my life. Help me, oh God. Mighty God. Few more minutes, pray. 
where my father did not go woke up. Where my mother could not cross. Where no one has crossed in my family. I come in the name of Jesus as a barrier breaker. Oh. to the forces that stand before you. I come with keys. I do not come alone. I come in the name of the Lord God, the captain of heaven. Therefore, I challenge every door, every demonic pattern, every strange occurrence in my life and destiny. Lift the voice and pray. In the name of Jesus, the pattern that kept my father down, kept my mother down, I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. I will rise. I will prosper. I may be from Plateau State, from Kaduna State, from Lagos, from Koti. I break the territorial barriers. I break the social cultural barriers. I break every sentiment of tribe and culture and race and gender in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. I break it in the name of Jesus. I arise. I shine. I arise. I shine in ministry. I arise. I shine in business. I arise. I shine in family. In career, pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray one final prayer. Somewhere along that prayer, find a place and lay hands on your head. I am the desire of nations. I am Pula and Hepzibah. No territory rejects me. No territory rejects my grace. In the name of Jesus, pray. You shall be Pula and Hepzibah. In the name of Jesus, no tribal sentiment will victimize me. No religious sentiment will victimize me. In the name of Jesus. The honor of Aaron is upon my head in the name of Jesus Christ. The favor of Esther is upon my head. The favor of Daniel is upon my head. The favor of Joseph is upon my head. No enchantment, no divination, no yoke, no spell. No stargazing, no activity of the constellation. 
will affect the glory of God upon my head. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer for us and then we'll round up. Listen. When Jesus was born, a star arose right at the top of where he was and that star became a compass and brought his destiny helpers to him. I'd like you to prophesy and say, Lord, let my glory be lifted. Enough for those who can bless that grace to locate me. Lift your voice and pray. Let the kings come, oh God. Let the Magi come. For the king is born. The king is born. Let the Magi begin to come from the east. May they come, oh God, with gifts of gold, with gifts of frankincense, with gifts of man. In the name of Jesus, let the woman bring her alabaster box. Every blessing, every lifting. Hallelujah. Please let me steal out two or three minutes of your time. The Lord just put a very serious request in my heart. The Bible speaks in Luke 18 about a weak woman who had no help and support and an unjust king, a judge that didn't share God nor man. And the woman came to him, avenge me my adversary. The Bible says for a while he would ignore her. But because of her importunity, the woman would weary him. The Bible says if that man could avenge her, he says how much more shall God avenge for those that call him? He says surely you will avenge it speedily. This is a prayer. I told you that I saw a revelation and I saw speedily. You are going to apply it to your life and say Lord become speed to my life. The year is not over. Lord, you are my speed in this season. Give my feet acceleration. Give my finances acceleration. Oh God of heaven, bring beauty speedily to my life. Take away shame, oh God, from my life. Take away reproach from my life. Speedily. Speedily, oh God, bring speed to my finances, speed to my spiritual life. I cost everything, fighting speed in my life. Pray. Let me share one testimony that happened to one of our loved ones. Um, this is something that is very recent. One of our dear ones who graduated from the school of ministry, he works with fan. And every time um, we're around picking our flights, he's always there to facilitate things, to make things, actually two of them. And something happened, I was traveling I think about two weeks or so ago, and um, I was just finding out a few details on the flight to Lagos and the gentleman booked it was it was a late flight so it would be very expensive and he insisted and booked the flight for me I said no you didn't have to do this I just asked you to find out and he said no apostle I won't collect anything from you and I said God bless you I traveled when I returned they were there again we returned in the night and he was there with the other gentleman to facilitate my movement my luggage I was tired Hallelujah. The Lord bless you so much for staying tuned till this time with us on this platform, Reflector Hub TV. And as God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman has been a big blessing to your life. I want you to stir up your hope. I want you to increase your expectation. The Bible speaking in the book of Job, he said, A tree, though it be cut down at the scent of water, it shall spring back to life. 
don't give up hope on that project don't give up hope on that health condition don't give up hope on that academics on that admission on that business on that your ministry for yet there is the scent of water coming to that business there is a scent of water that is spilling over to your health to your body there is a scent of water that is coming to your business coming to your ministry and then get ready because it's going to sparkle up like a fire yes stir up your hope and don't give up because what god is going to do in this year with ministry and all you lay your hands to do it's going to be amazing it's going to be reviving get your heart set and stay revived stay connected as well and don't forget to share this video to your loved ones family members and friends as your life gets set for transformation god bless you